G'day, folks. It is the coach here, and we are talking about corn, blood for the blood god. Oh, I forgot my hat. Damn it. Damn it. Sorry. I've got these little I've got no 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 no. I've got a hat. I've my one of my favorite bands is corn, uh, as in like the the 90s rock band corn. And like most of the time I wear my corn hat as a little play on words, and I've just realized, oh crap, I haven't got corn. I did bring my Uzo. I'm with Con here, by the way. Con is uh, a legend when it comes to corn, and it's probably a crime that I haven't had him on the channel. So I've got my shot of Uzo to say, Opa. <laughs> and I got Con here, and we're going to talk all things corn in third edition. Um, corn. Talk to me, man. Talk to me. How, how, yeah. how are you finding corn? And maybe give people a bit of an introduction on yourself because I love corn. I sure have thing. played against them many times, but not third. So I don't know what's mm -hmm. really changed for you. All right. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, greetings from Sweden. Um, I like the corn part because it sounds like corn a little bit. And people know me probably as Paint for the Paint God on uh, Instagram from the, the guy that makes these. These ones, probably seen them on Twitter or Instagram yeah. or there. Your your hobby is awesome. Your hobby is just such a pleasure to watch. Cheers. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, it's great to hear. I need to say that um, I'm from Greece, so when I'm excited, my accent comes up. And talking about corn is very exciting, so you're going to hear quite a few strong uh, consonants there. But uh, yeah, I've been playing corn basically ever since I started Warhammer, which is not that long ago was probably when Shadespire came out. And when Shadespire came out, my brother, always the paladin, wanted to play with the blue guys. So it was the defenders, the Stormcast. And there was Garrick's Reavers, which was the Blood Reavers uh, warband. I'm like, all right, they look cool. And I obviously I knew War Warhammer, but I didn't actually play. I was more of a D&D guy while growing up. So uh, in the tender age of 27, I got into Warhammer, and I'm now very deep into it. And people ask me, do you play Warhammer 40k? I'm like, I play a sort of 40k. I've paid more than 40k about it. Hope my wife doesn't watch this. So it's just Age of Sigmar for me. And when we say Age of Sigmar, we're basically talking corn. Uh, love at first sight. I don't know what to tell you. So you are the corn guy. You are the corn guy. You eat, breathe, sleep. I'm in a couple of uh, chats with you. Um, you're in my Discord, and all you talk about is corn. Like corn could be the worst army in the world, and you're always list teching, which is again why I absolutely had to have you on the channel talking a bit about corn and getting your experience. And I'm sure we're going to acknowledge the pink elephant in the room, and that is some fancy pants, expensive model that people are loving in Reapers of Vengeance. And people talk about this big guy. I don't, I, I can't remember his name. Was it? No, not Go Trek. It's uh, Sir, it. not uh, appearing in this film. Basically, that's his base, and he broke off. He just he left. So we will talk. Yeah. We will talk Archeon, but uh, we were talking yeah. as well before the show that you know. Is there a world where Archeon doesn't exist and you don't need to take Archeon? And I think the answer is no. There's certainly a lot yeah. of power. There's a lot of power in Archeon, but you're putting a lot of points in Archeon. So we've actually got two lists that will kind of show off where you're thinking from a Blades of Corn third edition. And um, I know you've tapped into a little bit of the keywords as well. You've got into Corn um, across Slaves to Darkness as well as Blades of Corn. Mm -hmm. So mix and match oh, how you want, but. Um, what got you into corn out of all the chaos gods? So you you've obviously talked about the you know the the starter box, but mm -hmm. you might have gone you know the starter box is great, but you got Zench over here, you got Slanesh mm -hmm. over here. Why did you de dedicate yourself to this one of the five chaos gods? Yes, Gaven, I'll count you as a chaos god. Mm. Uh, well, when we when we began playing, uh, we had the starter set, the first one, the Stormcast versus Corn. So it was. Um, Basically, I had to choose between Stormcast and Corn, and I started reading into it. I have to say, Corn has the worst PR in the game. Definitely, I heard them being—I heard them be called the Boring God, which maybe appears so, but it's not. Also, this macho, strong, uh, bulging muscles, very damaging. That's also not it. Uh, basically, Corn has a very has a a bit of a PR problem. Because they're not as strong as they appear. They don't deal as much damage. 
they're not fast, they are not uh, charging and running. But what you do have is a lot of choices. And it is a mind taxing game, which is why I think Archeon came as a godsend because it's half your army. So it's not as mind taxing. Yeah, you, you play with giants, you know how it is. Three, four, six units, six models, that's it, great. And so what I found with Korn is that it's definitely not a beginner's army and definitely not now in 3.0. Uh, you need to be able to think ahead quite a lot. You need to know exactly how your army works and where you need to stand. So you get your buffs, you get your ores, you get your bubbles, so many bubbles. And But here's the thing. Your opponent probably doesn't. So there are a lot of moments where your opponent says, hmm, I wonder what this does. And then they realize what it does, but then it's too late. Because in Warhammer, you don't really play the game as much as your opponent. Uh, in theory, everything is great. Man, math hammering stuff is quite fun to do. But when you play the game, there are no takebacks. As you said, it's a good lesson to teach. So I like that part about Korn. It's very, there's a lot of strategy. There is no point and click. And that's what I actually enjoyed. It's very, I find it very strategic, which is not part of, it's not on the tin. That's what I mean, the PR issue. I think people no. expect Corn to be like Iron Jaws, where they're just like, oh, you like to run forward. And when we started Age of Sigma in first edition, I don't know if you had the pleasure of playing in first, but there was this thing called Motorhost. It was the battalion that ruined most people's days because yeah. you'd have like 90 to 120 blood letters that could charge you in turn one. So you got this reputation of just getting into combat and punching people in the face early. But then with the blood tie, you're right. I noticed that you do have a lot of thinking because, and hopefully this kind of gets fixed in a, in a, in a very, very soon and in a newer book, but mm -hmm. your blood tie isn't as forgiving as the other chaos gods you don't have the luxury of dropping three different options or, you know, the way that that kind of works. So you are really thinking and trading off. What is that one thing that I really need? I'd love to dispel with my blood tie, but I'm really going for this. Or is the summon really worth it? So I, I agree with you. you. There's a lot of thinking. Yeah. Um, I had a discussion the other day where what is the thing that makes you get attached to an army? What attached to your arm, and for me, it's blood type, definitely, because it's at the start of the hero phase and not your hero phase, which means that you get to do things in your opponent's start of the hero phase. And we're going to get to 3.0 in a minute. Yeah. But when people say it's a boring army or you don't get to do as much, I'm thinking, well, you haven't actually read that much into it because the ability to be able to move or charge or attack in your opponent's start of the hero phase is, is a godsend, which in this case, it's literally a godsend. And I've always been saying that Blood Tithe, if Blood Tithe did not fully deplete uh, during, uh, when you, whenever you use it, it would be super broken. That's my, that's my feeling. Okay. That's okay. like, if you think, let's say you have, let's say you gathered seven Blood Tithe. So it would be something, or, or even, you know, let's say eight which means, okay, start with hero phase, three, I move something across the table, three more, I move across something and something across the table, and then you cast a spell and I dispel it. Mm -hmm. So that's three things in your opponent's hero phase. That would be a lot. Or three, move, move, and then summon. That's a bit too much, I feel. I'm not saying that they're the other gods uh, summoning is not broken, because right now, well, at least bent, yeah. Talking about Zinch as it is right now. <laughs> Looking at you, Zinch, you need a new book. Yeah, or let's say Slanesh. I had a friend who played Slanesh and he was he used to carry an abacus, you know, the thing with the, you know what it is. So he had that next to him so he could count the how many points, summoning points they have because of damage. There's a lot of bookkeeping. But, there's a lot of bookkeeping yeah. in the other armies, but um, you were mentioning you were mentioning the transition from third to second to third. I don't want to kind of harp mm -hmm. too much on blood tie. Blood tie oh, is a great mechanic. Um, definitely, yeah, it is what it is. Um, but it's good to hear that you you liked it, how it kind of is, and if it changed and got improved, it's only a, a better. But sure, talk talk about third. Talk about third yeah. because I've seen your list tech in second. 
I've seen mm -hmm. your list tech in third and we've got some lists to go through and Hayden, the elf bro has already started talking about probably for me, the, one of the biggest surprises in third edition was the corn uh, demon prince. I was surprised how generous that bubble was on the table. Oh and yeah. Like, because I played it in second edition just before third edition came in, I had a tournament and I got to play Archeon and in Reapers with this demon prince. And I could kind of avoid the Demon Prince because the board was really long. But now that the board has changed, I'm like, you put that in the middle and it takes up a lot of the space. You can't get away with it. But before we talk about that, what are your thoughts on third edition? How do you think Corn has kind of come out of it? Mm -hmm. Has there been things that you kind of, you know, you've really enjoyed? Like, talk to me about your third edition experience so far. Well, I ain't going to lie. It's uh, kind of an uphill battle now because there are a few very, very strong nerfs that we're going to talk about. There are some that are quite apparent and some others that are hidden tech that got worse. Let's start by talking about the priests thing, the prayers thing. Corn uh, used to be able to do three prayers. So blood blessing, which usually was gain a blood tithe uh, or plus one to save or plus one to hit. These are the three most uh, useful ones. And then a... Uh, another prey from the War Scroll, which is probably Blood Boil, which is the yeah. D6 Mortals, or Blood Bind, because Blood Boil deals damage, but Blood Bind wins games. You choose an enemy's uh, unit and you take them back four or five or six inches. I don't, and... think, I don't think anybody anybody's really done that to me. I think most people yeah. go for the Blood. Most people go for the Blood Boil against me, which may sure. Like that. I even forgot the thing about is, it, it wins. Yeah, it wins. It wins matches because you literally remove people from objectives, yeah. or you make space for Archeon. Uh, that's what I've been doing. I had two priests in 2.0, Bloodbind five inches, Bloodbind five more inches, and then Archeon has a way to go over on the on the big pie. So, uh, Bloodbind is again hidden tech. People don't think. People think priests. They think blood boil, which is okay. Yeah. It's D6 mortals. It's not. Not nothing. Uh, but like you said, the Demon Prince right now is probably the biggest winner in the book because it's 18 inches within and redeploy exists. So you will basically not get charged, probably not get charged by something if you don't want it to be charged. We'll get back to that. But still, 2.0 to 3.0. The thing about the prayers, it's huge. And people were like, yeah, but three prayers from one... Uh, unit was too much. And here I say, we have no shooting phase. Mm. And we have no spellcasters. We have one thing, the prayers. That's the one thing. Because it's uh, sort of a joke I always make when I play with my buddies at the club. And I say, okay, done with movement. Now is the shooting phase. And we're done with shooting phase in the same breath. So no shooting, no magic. We did have prayers. Now prayers got nerfed. To the ground because um, the judgments, FAQ pending, they yes. still disappear on a five plus at the end of the round, which they kind of forgot about it. They basically forgot about it. They they forgot to delete it. That's the thing. So the new invocations rules, they kind of half wrote it now, so it's not actually written well. If they take away the five plus, they're going to be okay, especially the skulls. We'll see. Yeah, but we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. I, I do want to just put a caveat on what you said yep. around the, the the prayer nerf. And I will say that while it is a change to from second to third, it's also mm -hmm. consistent across the game. So it's not like corn got picked on, you know, nope. daughters of Cain, which is the army that I'm currently playing has the exact same rules. I can't activate the avatar of Cain and cast, you know, do it, do another prayer. So, um, but it does, yes. it does hurt. I, like I, I appreciate that it does hurt, but know that other people who are doing prayers also have mm -hmm. the same thing. Thing is, with Daughters of Cain, you have a super fast army, and you have lots of rend. You we uh, corn has no rend, and you also have spells, and mortal wounds, and power. I'm just saying. I'm just saying prayer to prayer. I'm just saying like the prayer yeah. To yeah prayer I get it. I get it. But they basically nerfed it. I don't know in response to an upcoming book, maybe because that is it, as it is right now. It it's really it, the the army is hamstrung in that sense. So getting back to 3.0, how does corn play? You charge. You charge in very, very careful bubbles, having thought ahead 
from a previous turn, how are you going to move? You have to think about the double or not. So you have to make different contingencies in your brain. And now redeploy exists. So your charge has gotten worse. And also Unleash Hell exists, which we don't actually have. We cannot actually use because of the lack of shooting. There are very few things that can have uh, shooting in corn. You probably but your spend opponent a command does. Point. You probably wouldn't spend a command point. No. And for anyone no. who doesn't know what we're talking about, folks, um, your opponent can spend a command point. So redeploy allows a unit to um, move D6 inches so they can move mm -hmm. back or move forward um, or they can move to the side and go onto an objective. And then yep. Unleash Hell is um, they can shoot basically when they're charged, um, but they shoot with a minus one to hit penalty. So um, yeah. if your Bloodthirster, for example, charges into a unit of KO or, you know, a unit of, you know, Lumineth shooters or whatever it might be, they're going to get an opportunity to shoot at you and probably do some damage to you before you actually start swinging. Yeah. And also I was thinking that... Um... People say, yeah, but now priests can unbind. Well, the thing is that slaughter priests could already unbind. It's in the war scroll. We we got nothing out of there. Or you deal one mortal wound to another priest. What? Why? Mm. Okay. Sure. You did it for five rounds and you dealt five damage. So any, at any rate, um, what else? You've got like you've got monsters, deal? right? Like like for example, right? You've got um you've got Do monsters. You know? Well, Do you? I, I mean, well, I mean, like, you have bloodthirsters. That's it. There, there are no other monsters in corn. In pure no, corn, we're talking here. No, yeah, yeah. But what I was going to say was, you have battle plans now that are giving you uh, additional points for having monsters with like battle tactics, for example. Uh, that's where I was going with that. Is that you've got some yeah. tools with battle tactics, so you're being rewarded. Um, obviously, we've got the grand strategies. You've had your, uh, you've lost uh, war scroll battalions but we've gained a new set of core battalions. Haven't even touched that. Let's talk about battalions. That, 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 that's where I'm leading you to. I'm like, we've got all these Yeah, you're right. You're happening. absolutely right. There's so much. We have won some stuff. I want to I want to leave them the positive for the end. There are quite yeah, a few. Cool. All right. Uh, so battalions. Uh, Gore Pilgrims, that's gone. So that was, that was bad because there were no taxes in it. It was just Blood Reavers and Blood Warriors. And the Blood Secretor and the Slaughter Priest, which is basically uh, your basic list. And it was a huge bubble of 24 inches where your opponent was had to reroll their successful casting, which is great. And you have plus one attack. And the thing about Corn is that how I see Corn is it's a book of great allegiance abilities. The allegiance abilities that win matches, the ability to move or charge or fight in the opponent's here face. And at the start to that. And also summon and get rerolls and all that, and the prayers, and they are basically wasted on weak, uh, weak war scrolls. That's why I'm very much looking forward to a new chaos, a piece of chaos book, and I'm not looking forward at all to the new, to a new Slaves of Darkness book. Don't touch well, that book. Well, Do not another, touch that book. Leave that there. Well, there's yeah. another update. You've got you've you've you now got access to. In the past, you you had to take a specific battalion in Beast of Chaos, sure. uh, or, or the, the way the Beast of Chaos worked in marking was really bizarre. But now, you know, you That's you true. have gained access to the Beast of Chaos. I just wanted to call out before you continue this really mm -hmm. good comment from Martin Almighty, which talked about while it's a little bit harder to get into charges with things like redeploy the board size has changed and your deployment zones are a little bit closer than, than in the past. So um, true. You, I agree. But the thing is that you have some. Yeah. yeah uh, sorry. Uh, the thing about corn is that you need to charge. There's nothing else to do, but charge and you have to do it the best way possible. And the thing about, about beasts of chaos. Yes. Now you can bring them in, which is great. And uh, I see Gloden said that bring five priests and shoot them off in one turn. You can only use one prayer per turn. You can only use the one prayer. You cannot cast the same prayer again and again. That's why I said one mortal wound. That's the thing. You cannot uh, redo it. You used to be able to. Two blood boils, three blood boils, whatever you want. No, not anymore. Uh, Beast of Chaos, as I said. Well, you know that Beast of Chaos is quite a weak uh, book in terms of how it works, but there are quite a few good war scrolls in there. That's and again, looking forward to the new book. And as for Slaves of Darkness, they used to be uh, and still are 
our best bet in competitive gaming. And I'm not just talking about Archeon, but they used to be able to be generals and battle line. Not anymore. You cannot yeah. do that anymore. So that's kind of sad because it bites in your uh, points, in your 2,000 points. And we're going to see the, the list later. But Marauders and Knights uh, were basically invaluable. And Marauders used to be battle line as well. So and now used to be twenties, right? Now they're down to tens. Ten, twenty, or you can no longer have thirty in corn yes. because they're not they're only in slaves. But twenty or forty, maybe forty was an overkill in corn, but twenty is still fine. There's they still work. That's that's a good thing. I was uh, I was around another... in the day so you could you could you used to be able to do um, marauders at sixties at one stage. Um I Jeez. was there. I was there when, <laughs> when marauders could be done sixty and it's so it's ridiculous. That. Yeah, it sounds ridiculous, but in 2.0, in Slaves 2.0, they got uh, amazing, everyone, to the point that they sort of become a negative play experience for some. Yes, that was my and next point. And I was, uh, was going to call out, so yeah. Pat Nevin, and Pat Nevin's been on the channel in the past, a great corn player, uh, absolutely yep. love having on the channel, but he's made a really good point. You might want to might want to share it, Con. Yeah, people basically can destroy your faction terrain now, and the thing is, they should because it allows you to reroll prayers, which is amazing. And reroll play, play, uh, prayers from the War Shrine as well, which is favors of whatever god you want you can use on your Slaves of Darkness units. So that is great that we're still able to do that. And that's why War Shrines are, even now at 185, they're a bargain. They're an amazing uh, unit. Um. Let's talk a bit of positives now. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say like, cool. We've we've yeah. set the scene of like what you need to anticipate, mm -hmm. and it's not all doom and gloom. There is some good yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah I'm no, glad that no. you've like set the scene. Like the people who have stayed on to listen to this are now committed. Mm -hmm. Like, cool. Yeah, we've gotten sure. through the the tough stuff. All right. Uh, let's begin by saying um, the biggest winner is uh, again, it's blood type. It must be blood type. It's specifically blood type three. Because you again, you win the game by playing your opponent, and your opponent is probably not that uh, dedicated to understanding how corn works. Because, like we said, corn is boring, corn only charges uh, barbarians and all that. The thing is, uh, in the last tournament where I played, in all three matches, I denied four battle tactics throughout three matches. So it happened once in two games and twice in another game because your opponent declares at the start of, the, of their hero phase that they want to kill your general or kill a monster or kill a battle line unit. And they need to decide that. And you're like, cool, move back. So I did that every single time. And my opponent was like, huh, right. And then they tried to come closer and like, nope, redeploy. And then they tried to charge and the demon prince is there. So they cannot actually charge. And that happened four times. That thing wins matches it even wins tournaments like that i played demon against prince. grave lords yeah the demon prince that... tried to kill him he can get in the skull altar now you have minus one to hit plus one to save you can give him the five plus ward the demon prince is along with archeon the most viable units in corn if yeah, they I... have a supporting cast of course i don't i don't say many units are must includes but i feel like corn right now with that demon prince yeah. is a must include like it's so definitely. good it's so good um and it's definitely yeah. one of the one of the actual models that deserves to have the amulet of destiny um with the with the five up ward safe because sure. it it will be a target and the great thing about it being a target is if you take down the demon prince okay you kill the demon prince mm -hmm. you're not targeting mm -hmm. bloodthirster archeon bellacore whatever it might be yeah. uh if you ignore True. it your charges and your runs have just become a whole lot harder mm -hmm. So how many things can actually kill uh, the Demon Prince right off? Because, again, you need to attack, by obviously, by ranged attacks. And I get he's in the Skull Altar. So basically, that 18-inch radius radiates from the Skull Altar, which is quite big. And there is a minus one to hit on him. There's a plus one to save on him. Uh, someone can actually help here. If you have, uh, like, say, 10 Blood Reavers next to the Skull Altar, do you get another minus one to hit? Because of Lookout Sir. So mm. I don't know if garrisonable units I can actually get the Lookout Sir, which means that even your if your opponent gets a plus one, it's still minus one. Mm. So and the five plus as you said, as you said. 
there is a skull shard mantle, which is a two plus spell shrug, which is quite a strong artifact. It is it's the obligatory one in Reapers of Vengeance, yeah. which is a two plus shrug. It's great, but I think the five plus is better on the Demon Prince. The Demon Prince is by far your most valuable asset. I think and, a, a, yeah. a lot, a lot, a lot of people because they're not so. The two plus shrug is going to be great with some of the armies that are currently strong in the meta right now, especially sure. things like Lumineth, right? Like yep. you can't stop Lumineth; they're so powerful. So having a two plus shrug is great, but then because of that, you're finding people are avoiding having a reliance on magic, especially the ones that don't have really strong strong casters. So they're not mm -hmm. going all in on magic. So by having the something like the the um, the amulet of uh, destiny you do get a bit more flexibility to be able to deny not just spells but also yep. mortal wounds and wounds outside of that so sure I, I do i prefer the versatility yeah plus the demon prince attacks first he fights at the start of the of the combat phase and in reapers you can have him pile in twice which is great so you pile in twice with your, with your demon prince and they they fight twice and then your next unit fights again so you'll be able to attack three times before your opponent fights which can actually take out some maybe some key units maybe and so the thing is there's so much stuff that you need to take care in your mind to be able to play corn which is why i think it's a very very bad choice as a starter's army the way it is right now in 3.0 but the thing is because we used to we are used to play at the start of the hero phase because of blood tithe and that jump to 3.0 heroic actions and all that is actually quite not that big a leap for uh, someone a, play, a player's a core player's uh, brain so it's not that bad i actually like it and i i found that the faction terrain being able to be destroyed with a three up i haven't had that done yet because mm -hmm. again in theory you can do it but are you going to have so many monsters next to it and that, that's what they're going to do so All you're right. right, you're right, you're right. Because initially I thought that I'm like, oh, young and a monstrous rampage the hell out of faction terrain. But no. most armies don't have that many monsters. And when I can stomp, when I can roar, or I can smash to rubble, yeah. smash to rubble is my third option. Obviously, there's a there fourth option as well. But there you but go. I wanna I wanna unless unless all of the things in my range are like hunters of the heartland and I can't actually deal any any monstrous rampages, mm -hmm. then yeah, I want to do a, a mortal wound stomp. I want to stop you from issuing a command point, a command, you know, issuing or receiving a command. They're just so mm -hmm. much better. So oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh totally agree. So I think that us being able to do things at the start of the hero phase, even if your opponents, is great because you are able to deny tactics. And that's how I think that's how you win games in 3.0 by denying tactics. It's so important. Yeah. And so the thing is that I like I said, there are great allegiance abilities, but not that good units, which that's where you get uh slaves to darkness in. And Chaos Knights are amazing. They have like people think more Sargard are great, and they are, it's true. The uh, offensive eels, but Chaos Knights on the charge buffed can actually deal more damage than them. And to, uh, buffing Slaves Darkness is point and click, uh, in contrast with Corn, which is auras. Like Corn is built, I feel that 2.0 book is they made everything smaller, like eight inch. I like couldn't couldn't Corn's whole number be like nineteen or something or seventeen or whatever. They went the thematic. They went the thematic route. You go from like Don't, yeah, yeah. May, yeah. Maybe may, maybe maybe there'll be a time where you'll be less holy yeah. within. Um, but yeah, you have things like uh, the Bloodstalker, which is an amazing unit. We're going to talk about later. By far the the best and most inconspicuous uh, character we got is it allows you to reroll uh, wounds, get plus three to run, and get plus three to charge. And that's until your next movement phase. So let's get a scenario where uh, Bloodstoker with his best pal, Archeon. I know we're not going to talk too much about Archeon. I don't know how, why are we at this, uh, such a high level as corn players, because I've been talking about corn players, and they said, ah, oh, don't talk about Archeon. He's too good. Like, So are we actually giving ourselves a penalty? Anyway. But let's say Archeon. It, 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 it's an interesting yeah. question because, and I think we're, yeah. 
we the the reason we mentioned we're not going to spend too much time on Archeon is we put a, a question out to the the Facebook group and said, hey, do you want to hear a lot about Archeon or not? And I think mm -hmm. the general consensus is that everyone who's talking on the internet, the talking heads, are, are, are all talking about Archeon. It's Archeon yeah. and uh, and Kairos, Archeon and Bellacore, Archeon and mm -hmm. some type of little combination. And yeah. I think there might be a little bit of internet tiredness to go, well, what else True. is out there outside of Archeon? So yeah. Archeon is definitely strong, probably yeah. one of the strongest units in the game right now. You probably put them on the pedestal next, along with Gotrek. Those two units together are probably leading the meta right now, and they're the big bads. Mm -hmm. um, and they certainly synergize well. And you and we got you yeah, got that's one why, of Yeah, great allegiance abilities, bad units. So when you have a great unit with great allegiance abilities, uh, we're just gonna go through the scenario. It's a very, very corner case, but it doesn't have to be. So let's say Archeon gets stoked by the Bloodstoker. This is gonna take a minute. So he moves 14 inches I feel forward. Like you just bring up the list. Like if you're talking, yeah, about sure, go ahead. Go ahead. If, you, go if ahead. you're talking blood stokers and you're talking Archeon, they yeah. feature in one of the two lists. So yeah. why don't we sure. just actually Let's bring talk. that up? Let's talk about the tournament list. Yeah, I think that would probably yeah, make sure. sense. So keep yeah. keep going. So here's the list. Right. Um, there for we go. people who can't see the list because they're they're watching us on a podcast or something, mm -hmm. it's Reapers of Vengeance is the first one. It's not the only list. There are we. I think we, Gore Tide. There's the one more, and we're going to talk about uh, another one uh, just without print. It's fine. Cool. So this so one is four heroes and three uh, blood reavers, three times ten blood reavers, which is your battle line. You have twenty more orders and two war shrines. That's it. That's 10 units. It's 10 drops. It used to be four, but after my last tournament, where I actually didn't use Archeon, uh, I went to 10 because it doesn't matter if you go first or second. You can actually set up by with the idea that you're going to go second. And if you go first, even better. That's how, that's how it feels. So anyway, in this uh, list, you have the Bloodstoker, which has the Mage Eater, which is basically uh, another Unbind, a Dispel which actually deals damage if you're all mate. Anyway. And your Aspiring Deathbringer, which is 85 points that give an aura of plus one attack for everything. Another good thing about Korn is that Command Abilities got sort of nerfed. And now you're only able to give one, unless it's auras, and the Aspiring Deathbringer is an aura. So you can have a plus one attack and be able to do your Command Abilities, which is another nerf that we didn't talk about. You're not able to double pile in with as many thirsters as you want. You can only do the one now. So you do it on the one that matters, which is, in this case, Archeon. And obviously, you have the Slaves of Darkness Demon Prince with the Amulet of Destiny. We already talked about him. He's there to just sit in the Skull Altar. He's the monster under the stairs. He's there and stops everyone from charging. And when I say everyone, I do mean everyone. It is an incredible, incredible nerf um, debuff to have your opponent's charge. So the 10 Blood Reavers, they're a screen, and I have started to actually like them because it's 32 millimeter base. That's actually quite a big screen. And you can do the thing that you go seven and then three with a triangle. And when people say, but if you get one wound on them, you're going to lose five. And my answer to that is always, so you attack them and five survived? Amazing. Because they're, they will die. Like, it doesn't really matter. Deal, okay, deal one wound. It means that you actually allowed my screen to exist for another round. Because they are... You look at them funny and they die. At any rate. Uh, 20 Chaos Marauders with Axe and Shields in Hunters of the Heartlands. Not being able to be roared upon is amazing. But that's for everyone. And then we have the War Shrines. The two War Shrines. One of them has Curse. And the other one has Blood Sacrifice, which is, again, it's Blood Type. And Blood Type, as we said, is a huge boom. For the army. I want to so, I want to I want to pause you yeah. there for a second because some keen observers in the chat, um, and I knew this was going to happen. Uh, even though we asked it on the on the on the um the Facebook group, we did mm -hmm, ask mm -hmm. this question, and some keen observers have noticed that this is not a pure um, blades of corn li list. Um, it's a bit of a hybrid. Just, I want to, I want to get your thoughts and opinions on this. But you've, you've, you've obviously built a list, and you've got some yep. things that have come from slaves, some mm -hmm. things that have come from blades of corn. Now, I guess a couple of questions was why would you go the keyword corn as opposed to just going faction specific only in the book? What do you mm -hmm. lose by say dropping 
some of the slaves units and bringing yeah, in, yeah. you know, blood letters or some sure. other type of unit. I guess mm -hmm. I, I obviously don't care. Like it's like I, guess, I said, like I said, first of all, as an immigrant, I'm like, I'm going to quote Hamilton here. Say immigrants, we get the job done. You bring people from outside and just add to your army. You don't take it out. And that's a, an amazing example here. Uh, there, we do have a list that is pure corn, but we just started talking about the tournament list. And this list can actually, I think it can go 4 1, I believe. Uh, like my last tournament with corn in 2.0, I did go on a 4 1 with uh, this one and only lost to Zinch Chains Host. And that was the pre FAQ. It was in those two weeks between uh the coming out of the book and a new one but still we just got this one we're gonna go through it quite fast and and by the way the I've got no issue. Is, yeah. we, we've got no issue by the way i thought i think it's just worth acknowledging that mm -hmm. um i can appreciate that there are some people that are really frustrated mm -hmm. because staying purely in blades of corn and mm -hmm. i had the same i had the same feedback when i did some videos on on slanesh i remember was yeah. that was that going into the slaves to darkness was the most mm -hmm. competitive build um, yes, you could obviously go demonets as opposed to chaos warriors and things like that. But I know there's a bit of frustration. But mm -hmm. I th I think just because you've got the combination of books, the most competitive will be more of a corn keyword soup. Um, yep. But you obviously can I... tweak and tweak and yeah. tailor this list appropriately if if you only want it to be um, just blades of corn. Yeah, sure, you can do that. You can play Reapers of Vengeance with four Bloodthirsters and uh, Hounds and Flesh Hounds, which is uh, actually a really good army. And right now you can go Bloodlords, five Bloodthirsters, Flesh Hounds. If there is any uh, room for the Demon Prince, you bring him because he's not Slaves Darkness, he's Corn through and through. I <clears throat> We have appropriated him. And the thing is, it's going to be a very fun army, especially in Gur. And with Blood Lords, now you have the command ability that says you fight with zero wounds. Yes. And that also exists in Blood Lords. So you can have two different Bloodthirsters fighting at zero wounds, which is great. That's good. Uh, it's not my style of gaming. It's not my style of gaming. I, I have one Thirster, and I don't even use him that much. I think I've played more than 100 games of Corn before actually painting my Bloodthirster. So I don't really uh, have them. Yeah, we're going to talk about sleeper changes uh, with uh, all that. We're going to talk about units later. I'm just, I wanted to, this is a tournament list that we can always obviously talk about. But the thing that I wanted to talk about is the Bloodstoker. <clears throat> and in this case, it's with Archeon. So Bloodstoker is going to stoke Archeon and give him a plus three to charge, which means 14 inches of movement and then 2d6 plus three charge. Archeon is going to fight twice. And maybe if you get four blood tithe, he's going to fight in your opponent's hero phase, start of a hero phase. That's the third attack. And in, in the combat phase, he's going to fight two more times. And if you get doubled, he's going to fight in the opponent's hero phase again. That's number six. And in the combat phase, two more pylons. That's eight. We're not done. In your start of a hero phase, you're still stoked. That's nine. Again, it's too, it's way too much, but you are able to get a maximum of nine attacks where Archeon reroll wound, rerolls wounds because it's it, it, the buff ends at the start of your movement phase, not your hero phase. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, is amazing. Right. And you can do that on a lot of things because getting plus three to charge means you deny your opponent uh, redeploy. You just sit outside of nine and you have a plus four to charge because most things have a plus one on themselves and a plus three. Huge, F plus four is huge. So can I just we can, can I just yeah. say can I just say narratively it grinds my gears that I have a bloodthirster a blood blood stoker cracking a whip at Archeon or a bloodthirster. I think for yeah. me, like narratively, like I know you guys can use all the tools to win, but like yeah. just the idea yeah. of this cracking the uh the the Lord of the Ever Chosen, like just yeah the Ever Chosen and all that. And that's why my stoker insights. has you know has actually a actual stoker like a flaming weapon. And he basically touches them on the butt, and there they go. There they run away. Or chaos, like chaos knights and all that. It's it's, it's a great, it's a great uh, uh, character to use. But he's super squishy. 
So oh, by the way, good, 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 good comment. You can't, you can't whip demons. You can only whip. Yeah, demons, but Archeon is, is not. Why, Archeon which, is which not works, a demon. Yeah, yeah only which works perfectly. He's also mortal. It works perfectly for Archeon. It doesn't work. And Chaos Knights for, and not, Skull not Reapers. Blood, not blood. Skull first, Reapers getting reroll wounds is amazing because they already reroll hits. So Skull Reapers is a expensive unit, but actually quite a good one where you can have reroll hits and wounds on them. And now that we do know that rerolls are quite of a rare commodity. It's quite good to have. You can even give it on Blood Reavers and maybe Cortai. They roll their hit rolls with one and they can roll their wound rolls and you can have like 40 attacks on them. So, yeah, I think that the Stoker is more like the cheerleader in the sense. Uh, because his whip doesn't work on Korgoraths, which is the biggest, the biggest, not the biggest, but there's so many wrongs in this picture. Like the Stoker came out to whip the Korgoraths and now Korgoraths cannot get the buff. In 2.0, because they lost the mortal uh, keyword, or he used to be able to do it on everything. Now he can only do it on mortals, so you cannot whip Corgoraths. Sadness. Uh, but anyway, we I wanted to talk about Bloodstoker, and that's why you got the tournament list, which we're not gonna sit too much upon. I'm just gonna say that I always take prize sorcery, which which I find hilarious, because Archeon yeah. is a wizard. Archeon is a wizard, so I'll try to kill him fully buffed in corn, and he's a wizard. So I'm thinking, well. Since Porn does not listen to our prayers, we're going to troll him a little bit by bringing in a wizard. So I was going to say, like, you're asking for trouble. I remember I remember one of the good players in Australia, Chris Welfare, yeah. brought in a – I remember he was running a corn list, and he brought in one of the Gaunt Summoners using the cheeky, mm -hmm. formerly um, oh. uh, the Ever Chosen, and I'm pretty sure Corn punished him at this tournament because uh, he didn't yeah. do so well, and it's because he brought a spellcaster. Don't bring spellcasters into corn. I mean, he doesn't like it. Like you have Archeon and he will never get the Mystic Shield out because of the minus one from the Skull Altar. And if you have Blood Scrater, you have to reroll if you succeed. And there's uh, the opponent's unbind. It almost never works, but it's fine. It's all. I, it's, I guess the yeah, price. I the price sorcery really works here as well because mm -hmm. you probably, you know, the most common uh, grain strategy that people are taking right now it appears to be hold the line, which is keep your yeah. units on, on the table. Which That's our next one. Yeah, and I guess it works counterintuitive to blood tie, right? You want models to to die to obviously get your your boost. So you're mm -hmm. either going to keep Archeon alive and he's going to go murderate the peasants, or mm -hmm. you're going to you're going to he's going to die and probably your your grand strategy falls over. He's not going to die. He doesn't die in three He doesn't die because he heals a lot, and there's yeah. so much you can buff him with your the, with the war shrines. And you can buff him with your priests and everything in the army, like the Bloodstoker, the Aspiring Deathbringer, the Bloodsecrator, everything, everything, everything buffs him. Wrathbongers buff him. So there's too much. And I think. And you use one of the three heads to heal. Can the Stoker yeah. use the ability on Archeon? Yeah, he's mortal. So, yes. Yeah. Um, so Reapers of Vengeance is the go to as it is right now, because, like I said, I do like one monster in the army. So if we look at the next. The next uh, list is more about. Can I, can I just ask you yeah. one question sure. that might be burning burning from people uh, before we transition? And it was the one that Go I ahead. asked you before we went live. You got mm -hmm. two war shrines. Now, I have not really seen people run two war shrines in a list. Mm -hmm. um, why would you take two war shrines as opposed to finding a smaller, cheaper priest, have one war shrine, one priest, and mm -hmm. put those extra points somewhere else? Sure thing. Uh, great question, because it does need a bit of unpacking. Uh, War Shrines, first of all, they're great. They have a 4-up, 12-wound, 12-wound and 4-plus save, which means it can be a 3-plus save. They can give themselves reroll everything, reroll hits or wounds. They can also get plus 1 to save from their favors. And again, it's a 3-plus rerollable in our, in uh, in corn because of the Skull Altar. And they deal 2 damage. Uh, per hit, and they do have they have two different profiles. So any pluses to attacks actually they do make them punchy. And in my list, there are two main um, well, let's say hammers. It's Archeon and the Marauders, and War Shrines can buff both in uh, out of eighteen inches, which eighteen inches doesn't exist in Corn. Like it used to be with the twenty four inches of Blood Square, not anymore. 16 it's inches is the biggest we can have, and it's holy within. So holy within 18 is actually great. You can have a um, you can have a war shrine 10 inches away from Archeon, and you can still buff him, or 12 inches back, actually. So that's why the war shrine is there. It, it hits well. It doesn't die. 
It's not like uh, like your opponent says, oh, here's a Slaughter Priest, dead. Mm. You can no longer do that on the Warshrine because it has a 6 plus after save. It has 6 plus ward and 12 wounds. And so you have Blood Sacrifice, which is uh, you deal D3 mortal wounds on something that you own. It could be Archeon, because you can shrug it. And you get a Blood Time. We need to jump back on a huge nerf that happened in in corn our prayers no longer happen at the start of the hero phase they use you used to be able to cast or pray at the start of the hero phase which means which means you get a solar priest using blood sacrifice on archeon and you let's say you deal two mortal wounds which is d3 it's an average he has a four up shrug so one mortal wound on average that's at the start of a hero phase you get a blood tithe you can now use that blood tithe because it happens at the start of the hero phase. So you, maybe you had two, now you have three. You can move. You had three, now you have four. You can attack. Also, Archeon is going to shrug it afterwards. You got him. You got one wound in. D3 heal. Again at the start of the hero phase. That's what it so used you're able to, to do. That. Just, just, just to clarify, that's what yeah, you, that you, was you used in to be. 2.0. Now yes, all, yes. Prayers, all prayers happen in the hero phase, which, again, it's hidden tech that hurts us. Another thing that changed is that Blood Tithe 3 used to be a normal move, which meant run or retreat. You can no longer retreat, which was huge because you were in combat with something and maybe you lost your turn. You got doubled or you lost the turn that you really wanted. You were like, okay, retreat. You're no, no, no longer able to do that. And, and, that, that's, hurts. and that's, that hurts a lot. That's just, that's just the clarification there that... Um, in the past, you could um, run or you could retreat and then run um, in the olden days. Now that we've mm -hmm. separated move and retreat as a separate um, as a separate action and run as well. So that just mm -hmm. to clarify that language that happened in third edition, if you happen yeah. to miss it, but yeah, um, yeah, no, it's it's interesting because I guess I, I don't you don't see two war shrines very often, and I guess well, that's if, how yeah, I wanted to say that that's how you kill Gotra. Well, that's how I kill Gotra with two war shrines. You're able to do kill Godrek. I've killed him three times out of three. Must be mentioned with three different opponents. So I think that, again, you play your opponent. You don't really play the game uh, 100%. So there's a little bit of poetry going on here. So let's talk about it. Uh, last game I played, Godrek uh, had the first turn. So he ran forward and... One of our biggest pluses is that people think Gotrek is unkillable. So I do fear the opponent who knows that Gotrek can be killed. So they're being careful. Uh, at any rate, it was three blood ties to move the War Shrine in uh, within nine of Gotrek and within eight of the War Shrine. And he got cursed, which is a four up re rollable. A four up is a 50 50, not in corn. Re rollable is huge, it's better than a three up. So it's not re-roll so once, it's re-roll. Yeah. So yeah. there's a good chance you're so going to get yeah. that off. He got cursed. And then the other War Shrine, which is, that's why you need it, gave favor of corn to my Marauders, which means re-roll hits and charges. Not that you need the charges, but anyway. And then the Bloodstalker stoked them, which means they re-roll wounds now and they get plus three to charge. Redundancy off the roof. And then the Aspiring Deathbringer moved at a correct correct position to have his aura of 12 of uh, 12 inch aura of plus one attacks and then the brothers attacked him they were outside of nine he could not redeploy he didn't redeploy when the shrine did it because it's in the hero phase you cannot redeploy in the hero phase no you can't there you go so they sat outside of nine and then they charged him and double ones on their charges and 11 and they did not roll double ones so you got you got gotrek wrapped by 17 Marauders, which is, I went on Tabletop Simulator to see how many you can get within one inch, and the answer is 18. So in a game of Tabletop, you say 17, it's fine. And that is 17 Marauders with three attacks each, plus one for the leader. That's 52 attacks. We're all kits and wounds, sixes deal mortals. So you roll 52 attacks. Addition. Yeah. Oh, he went all on defense. There. So he's on a two up. He's a three to a two. He's a three to a two, which I said, well, thank you for that, because I forgot 
because you forget things in corn. There's so much stuff. I gave by my will. I gave death frenzy to my marauders, which means when they die, they attack again. And you can use that if your opponent uses a command ability. Yes. So two plus, 52, two 52 attacks. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I don't care. He could have a, like uh, ignore rent a thousand for all I care because it was 52 dice fishing for sixes and they still in addition to damage, which was four up against a uh, three up because he has a four up base. So anyway, they dealt 24 damage to him by those 52 attacks and they actually killed him. They deal 12 mortal, uh, twelve wounds after the 3 plus shrug, which is not that um, common. They should have done 8. So, you know, 1 out of 3. 8 wounds will kill him. But let's say it was 7 attacks. And Godric will have to attack back. That's because it's the combat phase. If he attacks back, he will kill minimum of 10. Like a smart opponent will try to fail their hits and wounds. He can still deal, he still deals a minimum of 10 damage which means kills 10 Marauders, which means those 10 Marauders are going to attack back on death. That's 31 more dice. We're fishing for sixes. That's how I kill Gotrix three times, three separate games. Every single time, he never dealt any wounds because in this one, he died from the initial attack. So it's poetry because, again, it's corn is teamwork. The thing with the PR again, it's not every man for himself. It's a team thing. And you need the immigrants, as we said. You need to bring them in. <laughs> and bring, bring into all yeah. the hard work. Yeah, and... I, mean, I mean, people are like, no, this is corn soup. I'm like, the allegiance abilities are there. We all serve the same God, is like how I see it. Plus, I said, you want to be competitive? That's how you get competitive. Like, you play against Goldrek or Morathi or whoever, and you're going to uh, penalize yourself? Why would you do that? Yeah, I think I think I think it's like I think for for some some players it's certainly a challenge to think about their army outside of this battle tome. And you know, mm -hmm. if you want, to, and it's it's like me as a cities player, and I'm not going to go too deep into my armies, mm -hmm. but I could I could stay in cities of Sigma, or I could use my one in four into Stormcast. Mm -hmm. If I play Tempest Eye, I can go one in four in KO, and I mm -hmm. can build the best list that I possibly can make with the combination of units. So I guess if mm -hmm. you want to do the best. Um, then you want to probably tap into your Beast of Chaos, mm -hmm. tap into yeah. Wrath of the Ever Chosen, tap into Slaves to Darkness. Um, but but the next list we're going to talk about in a second is yeah, more I have to say blades. Sure, um, probably the second one or the third one. But I have to say, it says people ah sucks that half your army is Slaves to Darkness. I'm like, uh, nope, I'm good, I'm fine. It's the it's same as good. like. It's like me taking KO in my Tempest die. I'm like, cool. Yeah. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take some good units because I want the best result. Yeah. But if I just want to go pure pure cities, then go pure cities. You do you. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's up to you how you exactly. want to do it. You want to, and True. we've already talked about this. If you want to not have Archeon, take Bloodthirsters. If mm -hmm. you don't want to run X, take you know, you don't Marauders take Bloodletters. Um, yeah. Stay within the book. I think that a new Blades of Corn book is gonna make more slaves to darkness units go away. And because the thing yeah, is, the rerolls, it's such a huge boon to be able to get rerolls. But this one is more of a pure corn with a little bit of beasts of chaos because it's a new thing. So we need to be able to see <laughs> and, it. And I love it. I love the fact that yeah. you've got three bulgors in there. And and again, it's not like you put a lot of points into it. So again, if people don't want to go out and buy some bestigor and some bulgor, mm -hmm. cool. Go buy some iron golems. Go go find some more blood uh, skull crushers. But your yeah. second list is a Gortide list, which mm -hmm. you got hold the line. Um, yep. Def, this and is definitely this is yeah. This is definitely blades of corn. Oh yeah, uh, with a little bit of uh, beast of chaos in because I don't have any. I don't own any models and any beast of chaos models, uh, so I thought it would be fun to see. And there's quite a few interesting parts there. And again, I'm looking forward a lot to the new battle tone. So in this one, we, again, you have Bloodstalker and the Blood Secretor. And you have a Slaughter Priest with Blood Sacrifice again, obviously. And you have the Wrath of Corn Bloodthirster on a 5 plus Shrug. And the Demon Prince, because the Demon Prince is every corn list starts at uh, 1,790 points. Now, uh, with him there, he's just sitting in the altar. And then you have the mighty skull crushers, two times three, and ten blood warriors. So your your battle line units aren't going anywhere. So yeah. you have the wrathmongers, which are again the cheerleaders. They even have the 
to things that they move around, but they give plus one attack to everything within eight. But again, there's five models in a unit, so it's easier to be able to do that. There's 10 Bestigors, which use Flash. Bestigors are actually quite fine. And the Bulgors, which get the minus two rend three damage, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I can check. I'm pretty sure they're three. I'm, they they hit like a truck, especially yeah. if uh, if there's a Doom Bull as well. Mm -hmm. They they just absolutely you know you know I, I'm used to fighting a unit of six Bulgore with the Doom Bull around, and they just absolutely mm -hmm. hammer. They, they're probably just as strong as a Bloodthirster. But yeah. um, I love so like why would you go Beast of Chaos for people who are probably new to this and going mm -hmm. they haven't looked at the Beast of Chaos yet because it was so mm -hmm. restrictive back in the day. What does yeah. Beast of Chaos bring into the table? Well, let's start with the best, of course. Uh, 135 points for 10. It's a one wound, but four plus save. And when they charge, they get a plus one to hits, if I remember correctly. And so they're on threes and threes, minus one rent, one damage. 10 of them with three attacks, uh, meaning that the Blood Secretor gives them plus one attack. The Wrathmongers give them plus one attack. I think they either have four or five attacks at the end of the day. So that's 50 attacks, threes and threes. Rerolling against Order, I think, which is not that bad because Order, there's quite a lot of armies of Order there's out there lot, right now. Of, and, and hey, so, if, if, if Stormcast Dragons are coming pretty soon, um, mm -hmm. I would I would love a reroll against those things because yeah. I imagine they're going to hit like a truck. And now with that rent isn't that uh, big a commodity, they do still have minus one rent, but it's again, it's 40 or 50 attacks. When I looked in the in the website, it said they come on twenty five millimeter. I'm like, yes, square bases. So, uh, so close. They're on thirty two. They're on thirty two mil base, which, yeah. which makes your unit. And there's probably another yeah. call out as well is that unit coherency has changed now in third edition. If you haven't noticed, um, mm -hmm. twenty five mil bases are worth its weight in gold. Th oh yeah, thirty twos. Thirty twos. You've got to watch out for especially if it's a 32 mil base with a one inch attack, you'll yeah. find that you won't get all of your models in combat because there's yeah. too much distance while keeping coherency. But exactly. if they've got a two inch, if they've got a two inch range on a 32, mm -hmm. you're fine. Yeah. But so best of course, you're going to get like seven or eight of them in there, which is again, it's a big uh, pile of attacks, a lot of dice there. So they will deal the damage. And I don't think that people will look at this and go, I should shoot the best of course, when they have to go through 12 different, uh, in units. Uh, at any rate, you have uh, I have to talk about the Lord of Corn on Juggernaut and again a little bit of hidden tech that got nerfed I realized in the last tournament I took part in. Q the foe gives you plus one to damage on your melee weapon and Gore Cleaver, which is probably the best mortal uh, artifact that we got, is minus one rend and sixes to wound are double damage. Yes. So Lord of Corn on Juggernaut used to have a D3, a minus one D3 axe, which on sixes to wound is three damage. So with Hugh the Foe, it became four, and doubling that with Gork Lever is eight. So sixes to wound dealt eight damage, minus two rent. That's no longer the case. You either have to choose the Gork Lever buff or the War Scroll buff. So nowadays it's two D3 plus two, which again can be eight, but it can also be four. Yeah. Sad. Um, again, I realize that it still he, he still dealt twenty damage to a bunch of gluttons when I used him, but he could have done twenty four, I guess. So uh, that's why the Bloodstoker is there because you're going to give him real wounds, and with a, a couple of extra attacks, five attacks on threes and threes, maybe even twos if you use the command ability, because there's nothing else to use uh, on him. There are no other CAs for for him. It's twos and threes, reroll wounds, so you can actually fish for sixes to wound. You probably get one, maybe even two in there. So that's maybe one or two minus two rent, uh, two D3 plus two damage attacks, which is a good one on a thing that has a three up save. So that's pretty useful to, to have there. And you have the Wrath of Corn Blood Purser because he unbinds with a plus two save, uh, plus two to unbind. He has. Uh, Two, not even one, but two ranged attacks. Incredible. Don't get too, don't get too excited about your shooting phase. <laughs> I mean, the blood flail deals six damage. So if it goes through, and that's a big if, still six damage. 
And so you also he's also a monster. So they're going to give you some VPs. And there's only one monster. So you, you're only able to give one VP to your opponent. Again, I said, yeah. I like my list to have one monster. It's enough. I don't want to give VPs to my opponents through, through that. I want to deny tactics. Then you can do that with Blood Tithe. It's kind of sad uh, that in my Grave Lords game, I have to say that for people, uh, because I think I haven't said it. In my last tournament, it was a one-dayer. I brought my Archeon list because I was excited. I was in Greece for seven weeks, and I hadn't played any 3.0 games except on Tabletop Simulator. And so I just wanted to use my Archeon in 3.0 because this is my favorite mob. And people were like, well, the TO was like, can you not use him? Is it okay if we call that no Archeon in the game because nobody else brought Gotrek or Morathi? I'm like, oh, I really want to use him. And I said, he actually asked me that at like 11 o'clock at night while the babies were asleep. And I had no other way to go in and actually bring in more units. And I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring two lists. One of them is going to have Archeon. Another one is going to have 830 points that I'm going to fill in. And I'm going to ask my opponents. So I go in the first game against more tribes and said, can I use Archeon? And he's like, no. Like, oh. Okay. I wish that was an option. I wish I could go to a tournament and go, yeah. no Archeon. No, no. not allowed. And th- so I win that game because I'm like, okay, I still have Demon Prince. And that's the guy who wins your tur- the games. So I win that match. And that's where the 20 damage from the Lord of Corn came in. And then the second game was against Gits with a Trogoth Hag and a Giant Squig, Colossal Squig. It was a fun list, I have to say. Lots of lots and lots and lots of uh, stabbers. Fun one. And I said, can I use Archeon? He's like, no. And I'm like, fine. And he's, I, got I the, brought, he's got such yeah. a reputation. People are people haven't faced Archeon. They're freaking yeah. out. People are just yeah, talking it's about true. Archeon. They should. They should be afraid. I must say that. So th- I win that game. And now it's uh, me and the other person that went 2-0. And he has the Avangori with Manfred. Uh, Love Love of I, or was the Vancouver? No, it was Love of I, and two vampire lords and zombie dragon and zombies and skellies. And I'm like, all right, you want two games? You have quite a good list. It's a huge, very new book. You have your monsters. Can I please use Archeon? I'm so tired. I was up all night because of the twins. And after two games, I'm like, I this is a dream sequence for me. I I don't even understand what's going on. Can I please use Archeon? He's like, no. And I said, fine. I actually pleaded with him like three or four times. Like, come on, dude, it's the last game. You won. You went 2-0. Let's, let's do this. And he's like, nope. And I said, fine. But I'm going to use every dirty trick in the book. And I did. And I won that game as well. I went 3-0 against the, in the tournament. Without Archeon, I must say. And so it was the Demon Prince stopping the charges, redeploying away. That was the game where the Wrath of Corn Bloodthirster just, he said, I'm going to kill your general. I said, okay, three blood type. Bye. He left. And then he redeployed within uh, the Demon Prince's big aura. And the Vampire Lord could not reach him. But my yeah. Marauders did. And they ate him alive. And that happened twice. And then he, we, he considered the game at round three when both his Vampire Lords were killed by Marauders. So even without Archeon, the tech is what wins the game because if I play against a corn army myself, I know how it works. But there is so much hidden tech in there that it's not very, like you said, it's not Iron Jaws. I'm not saying Iron Jaws don't have uh, tricks, but it's not very common to have an army that says no, no spell, two blood type. That has happened twice for me in the last uh, 10 games, maybe. It's all even having like the blood secret of making you re-roll um, your spell and you might then roll a misfire or miscast and take some mm-hmm. damage. Um, yep. I recently played a game against um, the Demon Prince. It was in a, a Legion of the First Prince army, but my opponent, um, so I set up for a three-inch charge, but my opponent did redeploy and even going back one inch makes it a four-inch charge. And you're like, okay, that's that's not a big deal. But when you then think oh, about is. the rule, no, 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 no. like on, on a normal, in yeah. any other game, like four right. inches, yeah. like, okay, I can deal with that. But when you start thinking of the aura of what the, the Demon Prince does, that yeah. four, halving the, halving the charge, 
that makes it a lot harder. So if you can get, like, even if you would have rolled a two or a three on the redeploy, mm -hmm. it becomes yep. near impossible to charge it. So um, the re the redeploy demon prince combo, or the corn demon prince combo, is is really tasty. Um, yeah. I would always have a I would have a CP up my sleeve for that one. Oh yeah, definitely. So um, like giving this, uh, having the chance again nerfed. You can only normal move with the blood type now. If you were able to retreat. With running, oh, and the plus three from Bloodstalker. That used to be, Arkin used to be like, bye, 23 inches away. Like, he's there, now he's not. I used to, I remember playing a game where I actually used Bloodstalker to move back, get yeah. rebuffed, and then go away. He, like, he did a pit stop or something. He came back, got buffed from, to the, to the gills, and then went straight back to the opponent's army. I've got um, a burning question for you, Con. I've got a burning please. question, because I haven't seen this for years now and that's just skull crushers i haven't seen skull crushers on the table for a long time now probably actually first edition so i saw them second edition you, you know some rule changes and things like that came in i ain't seen them for a while what brought mm -hmm. blood what blood brought the skull crushers to your list and why would you take two of them i think that's yeah, yeah. that's a burning question for me because normally sure. i don't see them mm -hmm. well first of all we start with the general with the lord of corn he's a three up that can deal a lot of damage. And he's quite fast, not that fast. I mean, he's on he's on a mount, but he still has like eight inch move, which is not that much, but he's gonna stick, stick it out. And there's, I need to say that there's an artifact that makes him even tankier, uh, like a little bit of tech that wasn't actually used. The Crimson Plate, which is a corn uh, artifact, gives you reroll, save rolls of one. So on a three up Lord of Corn, you can have a two up reroll once. So which is, which, if you want him to stay there, he's not going anywhere. No. At any rate, uh, Lord of Corn makes the Mighty Scar Rushers uh, battle line. Yeah. So there's your hold the line. You have a unit of three, which is 15 wounds and a three up uh, save. Yeah. And they also have, uh, you know what? I need to check this one because I know that the Lord of Corn has a spell shrug actually on him. And while you, from yeah, his, and while, uh, and while you search for that, don't forget, folks, you can then use all that defense. Do they have a unit? Do they have a unit champion in the mind? Yes, they do. Can they? They do. So they so they can then use all that defense and then get plus one to their save, making it a two exactly. plus save. Then they yeah. do have a mortal wound shrug or a spell shrug, <laughs> if I remember correctly. Um, the Lord has a five plus uh, wound shrug that comes from spells. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's fine. It's, it's not nothing to write home about, but it's still fine. And the skull crushers themselves, they yeah, have five? skull hunter. So there's five times three, 15 wounds. They do have a champion. They do get plus one to charge. They do get plus two to bravery from their uh, banner bearer. They do deal some mortal wounds, like uh, one mortal wound per model if you have three. D3 if you have six, which, okay, you can go for that if you want. And they have two different attack uh, profiles, which means every plus one attack is actually two attacks. And now that rend isn't that important, uh, volume of attacks is more useful. I always say that rend is not that important. It's not that it's not. It's that there are ways to bypass now rend yeah. from your opponent, but your opponent has still paid for it in terms of points. So. They ca they cost 170 points exactly like Gorgrunters, so they're more tanky. They're built like a tank anyway. So yeah, that's that's why you have them there, and they can they're a good anvil, I think. Plus they're battle light. So do do you think the changes to coherency would stop you in third edition from going to a unit of six or unit of nine? Because being battle line, obviously you can double reinforce them. So you could go up to a unit of nine, but knowing the way the coherency works, is that a disincentive for you to go as a, into a six or a nine? It would be nice to have the coherence thing happen after six. And yeah. now we have it at five. Yeah, that's why Lost I'm saying. Like if... But no, I think it's fine. You can have six. Just like Gorgorantas, you can have six Gorgorantas. It's fine. It's not going to hurt that much. And Would you go nine? If you, Would have, you, go if nine? you give them a lance, no, not nine is a bit too much. It's 510 points for one unit. Mm, why? You can just go two times six, which would be quite interesting. It's just 680 points. It's not that bad. And, and I, then, if I remember correctly, they do have a plus two inch with their lance. I mean, I have not sourced axes here, but that's it doesn't really matter. 
And if then you if have you a lose, if you lose, lands, it's fine. And if you lose one of those skull crushes, you go back to no. five, which means you've got Funny the coherency. Tree. So you, 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 you're yeah. a normal coherency rule. So exactly. Yeah. And he, in this case, the Bulgors, there's just three of them. So the size of the base doesn't really matter. You're going to have three of them attacking with plus two attacks from the Wrathmongers and the Bloodsecrator. And the idea is that the Bloodstoker is there for the Lord of Corn. But you can just as easily swap him for an Aspiring Deathbringer, which is a little aura of 12 uh, inches that gives plus one attack. So in this list, you can actually have uh, plus three attacks, which is quite a lot. And the thing is, it cannot be stressed enough how horrible for your opponent that how run and charges is. Like, if you deny your opponent charges, and they're going to try, nobody is thinking that much. Like, the game is so mind taxing. Nobody's thinking that far ahead. You must have a very small percentage of players who think like that. So they will try and fail their charges. And now they're sitting right there, close enough for your buffs, for your auras that don't actually cost uh, CP, which is great because it is a CP hungry army. I mean, I need to mention something here that the command, uh, the heroic action that gives you a command uh, point. Yes, you need to choose the hero that is going to use the command point for the turn. It's not get plus one command point. Correct, correct. You 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 have to say which leader. So if it's your exactly. um, Lord of Corn on the Juggernaut who uses mm -hmm. as a heroic willpower or heroic leadership. If mm -hmm. you roll the four plus on them, then um, only that Lord of Corn in that turn yeah. uh, can use it. So it doesn't roll over so, to your yeah. opponent's turn. Yeah, you used on the Demon Prince, which is going to give you a uh, the free half your runs and charges, or their runs and charges, or on the Aspiring Deathbringer, and and that's going to give you the plus one attack. So there's always things to use it on. If you have Archeon. He has a ton of stuff to do uh, with that command point. So there is a very interesting artifact, the Crimson Crown, that used to be a staple one for Bloodthirster lists, that gives you a free uh, command ability. So oh, got some fans in the chat as well. Yeah, I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the lava guy. That's why I actually have the paint for the paint god. That's my handle on Twitter and Instagram. So yeah, and it's another thing. There's so much stuff to unpack with corn. That's why I get a bit frustrated. I get a bit sad when people dismiss uh, the book as, like, even on Games Workshop site, they said, if you remember the new Stormcast uh, thing, like a week ago, where they said, um, when you get charged, when your Stormcast gets charged, they, they deal mortal wounds. And since you have Bloodbound and Orcs uh, charging headlong without thinking, I'm like, what are you talking about? Whatever listen, happened listen, to not punching down? Listen, because, don't worry about them. Rem remember yeah. when the ogre, there was an ogre artifact that triggered a lot of the community where it said the ogres are deadly as ever. And deadly at that time, a, ogres course, were yeah. never deadly. They were like, yep, deadly yep. as what? But charging headlong without thinking, there is no, that's that's no. not a core player. You're that's like, okay, corn. my my bubble is like this much and that ore is like that much corn and I need to use it in the movement. Yeah, corn exactly. plays four D chess. That's what they're doing yeah. because you're thinking so far ahead and you're thinking mm -hmm. of bubbles. You, I, I remember the days back in first edition where you literally mm -hmm. just ran forward with blood letters trying to do mortal wounds. I think that that's was, that what was, we're paying for. The children if, of second edition, me included and, here. But even, uh, even we like never blood, got that. Yeah, even bloodthirsters with the six inch piling, you don't just run in forward and just kind of smash face. Yeah. You actually set that up for success. You go for the you mentioned that. Sixes. Let's talk about the apparent, the more, you know, I say it in English, I kind of blanked on the word now. Anyway, the technology that everybody knows about, the six inch pylon with the Rage Thurster. Yes. And uh, with the Fury Thurster, sorry. That six inch pylon no longer works that easy because of redeploy. So you were used to sit outside of three and pylon six. Now a three up redeploy from your opponent denies that. And that's two times out of three. So. That's because they're going to move outside of six. You can no longer uh, pile in. They're outside you, of six. If you set up three. Yes. And you, you say, okay, three, I pile in six. Yes. Yeah, so on a redeploy, if they roll one, two, three or up. three. Yeah. If they roll oh, one, one, two, two, one or two. One or two. 
No, cause... because if they're all three, they move three inches, which makes them from three point end... one to six point one. Yeah, you got to be. Uh, you, you, you ended. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Six point one. You're no longer able to uh, pile in. So on a three plus, which is four times mm. out of six, you miss that tech, which I never actually really rated because I thought that if your opponent allows you to do that, you can actually beat them without using it. That's how I feel. And you might use it once in a game. And so I never actually use it that much. Oh, it was I, it was it was great when Slanesh was going around making you fight sure. on a two, on a two plus, but that, sure. that that's yeah. long gone. Yeah, yeah, it's long gone. Um, so that's gone now, which is kind of sad. But there's also another piece of tech that I used to use a lot, and that was when the Book of Iron Jaws came out in 2019, late late 19. Feels like ages ago now, but anyway. I read that they can charge in the hero phase. And I thought, why would you charge in the, your opponents or in the hero phase? Why would you do that? Like move and then charge. And then I realized that you're able to pile in if you are within three or if you've charged. But that's the rules. If you have charged, you can pile in. That meant that in corn, you could charge at the start of the hero phase. Okay. So yes. you are, now you're next to a, an enemy unit because you've charged within half an inch. And in your movement phase, you could retreat. So you could slingshot however fast your unit is. I always yes. used it on Archeon. So 14, plus 6 from the run, plus 3 from the um, Bloodstoker. That was a maximum of 23 inches where you could slingshot yourself outside of 3 inches from an enemy. And now combat comes, and you're outside of 3, which means you cannot pile in, but you've charged. So you can actually pile in three. So now that's how actually that was my first go trick kill. This is in big brain thinking. Yeah, in, uh, big brain corn, right? This is, well, yeah, this that's four right? chess. Four yeah. D chess. Thing is, I did that against go trick in high tide Ideneth. That was the fun. That was the funniest part. I was, and that was like because it was round three. I did the move. I charged go trick. I moved outside of three of them. And I'm like, okay, high tide, fight. Well, I have nothing to fight. Great, you're done. Okay, Arkin is charged, so he moves in. He piles in twice. He killed him. Go trick in, in two point. It was easier to do. And that was my first kill. So um, I usually did that. I used that uh, move whenever I got the chance. So I see a very good question by Peter yeah, here. Yeah, uh, we're going to talk about it afterwards. I'll, I'll, definitely, I would definitely, remind I'm, me, please. I'm putting, yeah. I'm putting, I'm putting on there, so we, so we definitely come yeah. to it. It's a good question. Definitely. So that tech is now pretty much gone for the same reason the redeploy exists, because you you can actually you can no longer retreat with uh, three blood type. It's only normal move. Correct. So you can charge. The language. You can charge. Oh, sorry. You know what? No, you you actually can do that. That's not the problem. You can charge. And then your movement phase, you retreat. No problem. You can no longer run from retreating, but you just no. move 14. Yeah. But still, if you sit outside of 3.1, your opponent is going to be like, okay, cool, redeploy. So even if they roll a 1, they're outside of... Uh, well, they, again, they need to roll 3 up, and it's gone. Because you can still pile in 3, you charge. Having said all that, I'm sure that people are going to forget about it. And I might use it when it counts. But I will have to read my opponent to see if they were if it works against them. So again, so so many shenanigans in corn, so much teamwork in corn, no rend in corn, no run and charge. Like I hate the fact that you have corn, an army of berserkers that waddle like pregnant ladies towards the enemy with their movement of five without being able to run and charge. So That's let's sad. let's Let's celebrate. Let's let's. I'm going to take my second shot of Uzo, and while I'm I take done with my Greek of... coffee, by the way, so, Con yeah. is Greek, by the way. That's why we're doing the, yeah. the the Uzo. But talk to me about some of the things that maybe you'd love to see, or maybe even like like as the meta evolves and and the game mm -hmm. evolves. You know, how do you think Corn's going to adapt? And um, I know for me personally, I was a bit sad to see Corn not get any love in the Broken Realm series. So I imagine that maybe was something unexpected. That, that shocked me. That, that really shocked me. I thought that they would touch everybody, and Corn missed yeah. it completely. I don't know You're if there correct. was a fifth book, a fifth book that was left at the printers, or um, or something big's coming down the track. But yeah. um, 
What's some of the things that you'd love to see moving forward? Well, uh, every single change in the game overall has hurt Corn, so I'm a little bit hesitant to see a new book because all those uh, tricks and shenanigans that I talked about, I'm thinking that they're going to take them away or something. Uh, but still, what I would like to see is, first of all, run and charge. That should be a thing of corn. They should be able to run and charge. Like, what? Are they tired? Come on. Also, like, if you could reskin, if you could reskin Daughters of Cain and into corn, if you have an opponent said, Oh, I played corn, it was a slaughter fest, it was a blender. Nobody's gonna ro- nobody's gonna be surprised and like what corn? A blender of axes and blood? That should be it. Well, you and I, so, you and I were talking not long ago. We said mm-hmm. I-, I would love to see a game where you take your corn models but put it under a daughters of Iron Cain Jones or, or, daughters an, of Cain. Or, an, or an yeah or an Iron Jones and just see how it plays because I reckon yeah. you're right. If yeah. if you had the gen- general rules of daughters mm-hmm. or the general rules of Iron Jaws. And then slot your army in. I reckon it would feel more like what you expect it to feel like. Yeah, I've talked about this. First of all, like I said, if Blood Tide stays the way it is, and it happens at the start of the hero phase and not your hero phase, uh, it's fine. Do not touch it. Touch nothing. Um, if they were able to say you can use it without being depleted, it would be quite strong. And you will see it in good players using that tech. If it was not a maximum of eight, or you can use both summoning and blood tie without it being spent like yeah like uh tom from uh, warhammer weekly had a great uh, point where he said uh like a couple a few a long time ago now said uh you can use blood tie and get to summon return like use yeah. the same number like if you use blood tie three you can bring in five blood letters or whatever or what's left and that would, that would left? be great that would pool. be great because again, you know that summoning does tend to win matches. You can summon five blood letters, sit on an objective. That's what you do. Uh, well, that's, that that's, also works. That's, what Z- yeah. that's what's happening with Zench right now. Zench is doing yeah. so well because yeah. um, Pink Horror is just, you know, you summon them on, they're yeah. just unkillable. Yeah. I'm not going to touch Zench, uh, but Nurgle. Nurgle also does that, which is good. And I want to say more things. There is the Skull Cannons are a disgrace right now, they do nothing. In fact, they're going to make someone's uh, day worse because they're going to be like, yeah, unleash hell, and they're going to do nothing more than 60% them, of the time. I think I fought them once in six years. Sad times. Sad times about Skull Cans. But the Blood Throne is even worse. So my change for the Blood and like you're like, what? What is that? Exactly. The Blood Throne should be a priest. If the Blood Throne was a priest, that would be cool. It's the Skull Cannon, but with a different build. Or I was going to say, like, I, I was literally pulling out my app, going, "What's a blood? What's a what is that?" I've, I the blood throne is a the skull cannon, but only melee, and it now counts as a totem, which totems do not really apply for demons. So, okay, that's the eighteen inch command thing. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can do eighteen inches. They should have changed it into a portable skull altar. They should yes. have given the skull altar uh, rules, maybe even smaller one, but those who are next to it. That would be that would actually make it quite useful. Also, make it a priest, so you can only run demons uh, without missing out on the priests. Uh, what else? Um, Blood warriors. They are a sad, sad unit. They used to be my favorite unit. I love them. It was the first, actually, the first models I painted were blood warriors. That was three years ago now. Uh, yeah, three years ago now, and. I fell in love with them, but they do nothing. They have threes and fours, no rent. And people say they pile in upon death, which means they give you a second chance to do nothing because they do nothing. They give back mortal wounds to your opponent on sixes to save, but they cannot reroll their saves. They can get a three up, but they cannot reroll their saves anymore. Now, you could actually give them a lot of defense back in the day in 2.0. They are great models. Uh, they, are, they are great models. And people are like, yeah, but they deal mortal wounds. So I'm going to pay 210 points for the chance that I'm going to deal mortal wounds to my opponent when they kill me. Bring Skull Reapers, 2.205. So I would fix Blood Warriors. Blood Letters, they pay for the sins of 1.0. They move five or four. They don't have charge. They have one inch reach on a 32 millimeter base. It's so bad. And I, th- I think I think what you just said there, and I'll, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add one thing to the list, and then we'll like mm-hmm. wrap wrap yeah. things up. But um, I think they, I think 
uh, some of the corn units are paying for the the, the sins of the past. And sure. I say that I say that because Stormcast original Stormcast is exactly the same. You look yep. at original Stormcast like Liberators, and you're like, eh, like they're on a mm-hmm. four plus save. They don't really have rend. They were they were working in a world where four up was a really good armor save. That mm-hmm. now six years later, we're we're dealing with Blood Knights on a two plus. We're dealing yeah. with armies that are doing mortal wounds at you know in in large scale of mortal wounds. So. Um, yeah. I think, you know, some real redesign um, would, would benefit you all. And I would love somehow magically the, um, the, the, um, was it the Corgorath, the, let's, let's find a way to get a Corgorath sprue yeah. for sale. Like I know it True. was built up in the, like, let's get some Corgis on the table. Yeah, it would be nice. I have like five of them maybe. Um, yeah. Well, Glowdon, it used to be three chances to do nothing because it was a blood type thing that allowed you to do it again. So I love Carcadrex, Jonathan. Um, yeah. they're great. They're you, you're no longer able to have them as a general, but no. I it's sad. It used to be great to have Hugh the Fall on them and Gore Cleaver, which I think Gore Cleaver is for mortals, so they that applies, not Bloodbound, which is the minus one rent double damage on sixes. Um, one I, the thing I would like to see from Corn is I have no spells, my prayers are now quite nerfed, my tech mm-hmm. is also quite nerfed. I will have to charge you. So what I would love to see from Corn is a way to level the field. When you play Corn, you are made to leave your spell casting at home or your shooting at home in a sense that like we're going to fight this out like that and let's see who does it. How would you be able to do that? To be more resistant to spells? To yeah. be more resistant to shooting? That's what I would love to see from Corn. So we're so- melee. Let's see if you can handle it. So there, I I used to play against Corn for quite a bit in old Warhammer fantasy battles, and mm-hmm. the Bloodthirsters used to have something called the Collar of Corn, and mm-hmm. it was either an automatic or a two plus, and and you know someone from from the old world will will actually message me, I'm sure, but you would mm-hmm. ignore spells. It was just straight up Corn, corn ignores spells. So I would love things like the the Collar of Corn return back on a Bloodthirster, yeah. and it's just like cool, they cannot be targeted. For magic mm-hmm. you're like i'll yeah. tell you that what i thought about bloodthirster we haven't touched on bloodthirsters and the thing is uh they're great they're, they're maybe probably better now because of the way you can have heroic actions on them but that's heroic four plus and, and but, they also get so bad. but they also get monstrous rampage as well right true true yes but that four plus hurts them that much in this meta of three plus saves what plus, that's four what, plus oh, you, i'm gonna say save. you're talking the regular yeah. save yeah it's yeah. it's quite sad, and there are, they can reroll hit rolls of one, but that's about it. And their damage is on D three or D six, which is meh. You know how it is. It's random numbers. You don't want that for your true hammers. So what I would love to see from Bloodthirsters is a way to say that this is the epitome of corn. This is melee fighting. You cannot touch me from. With spells, you cannot touch them with the arrows. Do you remember the Fellowship of the Ring when Balrog appears? When yes. the Balrog appears, the or the goblins run away, and um, Gandalf says it's a Balrog of Morgoth, and you see Legolas uh, with terror in his eyes. But the thing is, it's not actually the Balrog; it's a flame coming over. That's what I would love to see from Bloodthirsters. When they're not within three of an enemy, you cannot touch them. Like they're a mist of blood or something. Like it's a that would make them terrific. And right. terrific I, also has terror in it. Like you can only I, hit them, shoot them, fight them if they are in combat. Because right now they're just sitting there. You can get run and charge with the blood lords, uh, the baleful lord, sorry, which is which is actually quite fun. You can play a 3.0 game with five bloodthirsters and just some flesh hounds. Full demon, you can have the time of your life. And I would love to see the bloodthirsters be actually scary. Yeah. So I'm sure, I'm sure all of Games Workshop is watching this episode and they've written lots of notes about what the new blood uh, the battle tome is going to look like. So rest assured, folks, um, Games Workshop's been watching my show. They haven't uh, brought me in Warhammer Plus yet. So they've watched this all and they've written notes down and this will all be in the new battle tome. Con will mm-hmm. be the the champion of the, the skull altar. Um, but... To kind of bring us home and um, wrap up the show, mm-hmm. 
talk to me about some of the things that you're thinking about with your army moving forward because the, the meta is evolving, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we've only, you know, at the time of this recording, it's what week six, week five of Age of Sigma three, and you know we haven't mm -hmm. seen an FAQ yet for the for the um, for the general's handbook. Um, mm -hmm. We're seeing things kind of evolving and, and lists are being settled. Mm -hmm. How are you thinking about corn moving forward? Let's let's kind of end it here. Uh, well, if they fix the judgments, the skulls are quite fine. Already, uh, they you know you can move them sixteen inches out and uh, uh, within twelve, so that's a twenty-eight inch range. You have a minus two to cast within them, so it's uh, they're quite good. I'm looking forward to that change, so they do not disappear on a five up now. Yeah, but what are you looking for? like? Like, what, what are you thinking about with your army moving forward? Oh, like, okay, you, like what have you well, learned? What are you we thinking are... about? I like the fact that you have a lot of choices in your opponent's face. I actually do enjoy that. And it's how we learn to play. We, as corn players, at the competitive level, you are always active. You're thinking your blood type, you're thinking your buffs. It would be nice if our auras were a little bit more lenient. I would love to see that. Uh, again, as I said, I'm looking forward to the, to the Beast of Chaos book. We're going to get some tech there. Like Doom Bulls are fine, Best Gores are fine, but let's see what happens after that. A Battle Tome would be nice. Uh, and at the same time, I really, really enjoy the way my army plays. I like, I love Archeon. I'm sad that my favorite model for more than two years now, more than two years, I started playing him in spring of 2019 before the Slaves of Darkness Battle Tome. I loved using him with, like, it feels like Korn, how Korn should play. It's an avatar of destruction. And it's kind of sad that I've only had the chance to use him once in a game in 3.0 because literally people don't want to play against him. And so I would be okay if Arkham was a thousand points. I would be actually okay with that because I just want to use him. Like, and play more like Doc, like like uh, we, we, uh, we have, common we, we've got here. Yeah, get we, some friends. Get easier attacks, maybe make it feel like when you play corn, you're gonna get blood everywhere. So I would like to see that. And there's so much stuff we can touch on. So much stuff we haven't touched on, on like chaos gargans. I know you like. I look. I know you like gargans, and now you can have them corn marked. And would you, someone asked, I, I was going to ask you, would you bring in a mercenary mega gargan? So one of the one of the options can be the. Uh, what's your option? Is yours? The it's the only one. It's the only one that does not have. Bar. Yeah, it's the only one that doesn't have a missile attack. It's like yeah. we cannot get any breaks. Come on, give me a missile attack here. Like I love him in death. I love him in Grey Lords. The mercenary there has a great sniping attack. We don't get that. Mm. So I'm not that sure. I'm not so sure. But it's, I do. It's I also, the, bring it's, also the, it's also the slowest of the three. So between yeah. the Kraken Eater, the Gatebreaker, and this War Stomper, the War yeah. Stomper is the slowest of the three. So. Mm. Um, I think for me personally, I'd probably just go cut more Bloodthirsters or upgrade a Bloodthirster yeah. to Archeon. I, I don't, yeah. um, unless you need How a 35-wound. Like... Yeah, that pump. would be nice. But yeah. would, do you need it, actually, with the 3-plus save from the Skull Crushers, which are, they're quite fast in the Dill Mortal Wounds? They're actually quite nice. I don't know. I don't know. Gargans are a little bit... I haven't explored them that much. I need to say that Chaos Gargans, though, how would you like your headbutt to have five attacks or six attacks? Mm. You can do that in corn. You can do that. Like the headbutt was like five damage, six damage, something like that. Uh, I think. I think if if it's the same war scroll as the the um, the sons of Behemoth, it's only four four damage. Uh, I think there's some okay. minor changes, but yeah, like the the man the, the man crusher slash the chaos gargant. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's some sleeper stuff in there, and because you can pull from Beast of Chaos, does that mean you six can bring damage? Sorry, the... it oh, is six damage. Four. So we can have five or six attacks, vicious headbutt with six damage, threes and threes, <laughs> minus three rend. I mean, that's not so bad. And you can't you have get two of those, maybe. Yeah. And you can get a Saigor if you wanted a Saigor from Beast of Chaos. You could get probably a Cockatrice, actually. A Cockatrice mm -hmm. would probably be a better option if you were looking for shooting in corn. Yeah. The thing is that, yeah, uh, there is so much tech. Great allegiance abilities, weak war scrolls. That's the story of corn's uh, life in right now. And when you're able to bring in things like Marauders or Knights uh, or Carcajack, things like that, it's you cannot just you cannot avoid them. Why why not use them? I mean, I love using the things that I have painted 
And I love painting corn because those reds with a little bit of teal there and the lava bases that I really enjoy making. Uh, I love playing my my toys when I when I've painted them. So I'm not gonna say yeah, but they're not pure corn. I'm not a purist in that case. Anyone who, and... who anyone who gets blood for the blood god and skulls for the throne of corn, whether you are a mortal or a demon, whether you sit in a blades of corn book or a uh, slaves to darkness or a beast of chaos book, mm -hmm. they are all reaping the tide for the name of corn. Mm -hmm. uh, Jonathan asked about where I was going to from, and, and and I was going to I was going to finish this off on a narrative spot. Um, mm -hmm. Con, if people want to talk to you and they want to see your awesome army, and your ass, mm -hmm. army is awesome, you should you should also go check out his um his demon prince of corn. It's converted up and it's beautiful. So uh, mm -hmm. I'll put the link down below. But Con, what is that link? Where can people find you? I know you're on Instagram. Yeah, it's paint for the paint god on Instagram. I'm, we're going to link it afterwards on the episode. And also on Twitter, it's paint for the paint one. I don't know why. But again, it was when I made my Instagram was like, what do I love? I love corn. Blood for the blood god is what we shout. So it's a painting account. So it's paint for the paint god. In my country, I'm a horror writer. I'm an author of uh, horror. And so uh, if it used to say, this is not my bookstagram, by the way, because I had people coming in for that. So it's just a paintstagram for me. So that's where you find me. And last thing is, it's totally outside of Warhammer, but we're finishing with that. I had a contact from a publisher in the States, and they said, we asked for Greek writers of horror, and your name comes up a lot. Can we have a story of yours? We're going to make an anthology, uh, horror stories from around the world. And I said, sure, I love that. And I sent them one, and they bought it, and it's coming out in December. So I actually made a little bit of a Warhammer inside joke in the story itself. And it's going to be in English. So it's there. I I did that. Um, so, yeah. So, so the final question before we wrap things up is what army, what realm is your army from and why? It's uh, it's from the eight points. That's the idea. It's from the eight points and they serve Archeon. So everything I make with the lava bases, the, I hide faces in there. There's Daughters of Cain faces and dwarfs. And basically, it's souls that are trapped in there. So it's from the eight points because I have a mixed slaves to darkness and corn list. So some of them have that greenish uh, color that is the host of the originals that I've chosen and the corn one. So it's from the eight points. Come and get us, death. Um, quick question, uh, just some confusion coming out of the Beast of Chaos. So Ian Robertson is mentioning that, um, and it's a good pickup there, that Beast mm -hmm. of Chaos. Be, people might be thinking of your second list. They're going, wait a second, there's Beast of Chaos. How has he got Beast of Chaos when they're no longer an ally to call? They have changed it. They have changed it that every Monogod Allegiance can have one out of four units to be Beast of Chaos, and they get the mark. Be it Core, Nurgle, Slanes, each. You, so one out of four can be... A beast, and that's how they fix beasts now that battalions are gone. So yeah. that's how you do it. You can bring one out of every four. So you can actually have a list where there's one corn unit, two slaves to darkness units, and one beast of chaos unit. So out of four, you can do that. Uh, one, two, one. So you can do it, or two, one, one, for example. Yeah, if you if you play, if you played yeah. Cities of Sigma in the past, it's the same type of rule. One in four can be Stormcast in Tempest Dice. Mm -hmm. One in four to Carriage and Overlords. Exactly. Um, yeah, they, 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 they did brought that the again. same concept. Yeah, so they brought the same concept. So yes, one in every four. So if you got an eight drop list, two of them mm -hmm. could be uh, BOC. So especially if mm -hmm. they get an updated book, it means you're going to reap the benefits just like Cities players have been doing with Stormcast. But uh, sure. I will leave it on the note here that Arch Fay has mentioned, and that is Blood for the Blood God, Skulls for the Throne of Corn. Um, for me, it's for the good boys, uh, the hounds. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. The flesh hounds. That that's the biggest. That's the issue with me. I've never painted one. I haven't had them. So I think they're our best battle line right now. But my demon That's prince, great. you're gonna see him. He actually has a flesh hound for a face, because people ask, "Where is the face from?" I said, "Don't you recognize the best boy, which is uh, on the cover, the star of the cover? Good. He's right there." That's where he I is a from. good. He is a good boy. I play. I play uh, against Matt Campbell, um, who's one of Australia's. I think one of the Australia's best corn players, and mm -hmm. um, he loves his doggos. He's always running his bloodthirsters with doggos, especially now yeah. with all the unbinding and the cheap screens. They're a good, good. They're unit great to include. Great. But um, everyone's enjoying your cast. Thank you very much, Con. Thank you everyone who streamed and checked us out. Um, you all know the deal. Like, subscribe. Hashtag mm -hmm. best blood. 
popcorn episode ever. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to go and uh, go do stuff. All right. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, everyone. Nascala. Thanks for sticking around until the end. I hope you found that video interesting and you walked away with a few new ideas. If you did, I would appreciate it if you hit like on the video as well as left me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. The conversation will continue over on Discord, so link is down below in the episode description if you want to join the Discord and continue the Age of Sigmar conversation. I want to give a massive shout out as well to these absolute bloody legends, these champions who have continued to support me through Patreon or YouTube members. That is going directly into supporting the maintenance and the growth of this channel. So thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. And until next time, roll more sixes.